Everybody's tall, except for me. I'm poor in height. <laughs> right, okay, so I don't really have a story about poverty um, as such, because, you know, the notion of poverty striking doesn't really give you the idea that poverty is gonna beat you your entire life. So this is kind of an amalgamation of things I've gone through being poor and how I've learned to reckon with it. Um, I grew up poor. My parents were on unemployment. Unemployment would run out. We'd get on welfare. They'd get short jobs. We'd go back on unemployment. This vicious cycle of living day to day sustenance, right? It's not about art and life and culture. When they mentioned that you get tickets to the La Jolla Playhouse if you win, I thought, fuck, I've never seen a play. <laughs> Except for like school field trip, you know, because the neighbor would pay for me. So when we grew up, uh, I had two brothers and we often got a lot of hand-me-downs. And uh, it's really hard to get like, I had an older brother and a younger brother. So my younger brother, if he got hand-me-downs, they'd come from my older brother to me to him. So he just got things with a lot of holes in them. You know, socks with holes, underwears with holes, pants with holes, you know. And I, we learned how to sew. We learned how to live on, on the fringes, so to speak. Um, so yeah, so, and, and one time I even got the neighbor was in my own grade and I got stuff from her old stuff. So when someone else's old stuff is your new stuff, it's kind of hard to go to school when they're saying, yo, was Katie wearing that like two weeks ago? And you're just like, yeah, oh God damn it. You know, like, oh, why can't I just have the champion sweatshirt and the IOU sweatshirt and the Cavarici jeans, you know, decked out in skids overalls, you know? But my mom finally understood, and she, and she was like, this year, we're gonna do it. We're gonna get you what you need. You're gonna go to school, you're gonna have Reeboks on. Nothing's gonna have holes in it. It's all gonna look brand new. You're gonna, you're gonna be so happy. So we went to the swap meet, and I learned about counterfeit goods, <laughs> right? So <laughs> I had me a Chan Peon sweatshirt. <laughs> some Z Cabaret cheese, you know, and uh, I went to school and I thought, you know, no one will really notice, you know, if I stand like this and, you know, I kind of hunch over, but I show the fly, it looks like I got my underwear hanging out. If you don't know what Z Cabaret cheese are, it's like these ridiculous jeans that had a white stripe right here, so it always looked like you had a little bit of underwear going. Anyway, it's funnier if you know what they are. Um, yeah, so, you know, and I was really proud of it, and, you know, I had, I had some, you know, I finally had some cool clothes, and, and, you know, I just never felt right growing up in high school, so I tried to, you know, create my own fashion, be the person that wore sweatpants every day, you know, pretend I was really into sports and stuff. <laughs> Didn't, it never caught on, right? But I, I tried to make my own way, I tried to be cool in my own way, and when I went to, um, well, I finished high school and I got a scholarship. So that's what poor people get to go to college. Uh, also, basketball players get them. That's probably where you've heard the term. So, um, so I had me a scholarship and I was going off to Northeastern University. I didn't have a penny to my name. I didn't have a meal plan, but I had a dormitory room and I had my books all set. And that's when I met my people. You know, I was in Boston and I thought, you know, there's gotta be more to life than these, you know, rich kids going to bars. I can't go to bars, I can't afford that. What do you do on a, a Saturday night? You can't afford nothing. You walk around. Yeah. So I started walking around. I started meeting the kids that walk around. You know, and we started hanging out. I started going to punk shows, hanging out at the Rat Skeller, you know, like looking like a fool, but the holes didn't matter anymore. And, and it wasn't weird to say, yeah, I, don't, I just don't have the money for that. And it wasn't weird to be like, yeah, like, let's not go, 
go to a club. Let's, let's go to a basement. Let's have our own party. Let's throw our own show. And uh, so the moral of my story, I guess, which doesn't end with a huge laugh, is that I learned from being poor to be generous. I've learned to be generous in love and in an emotion. I've learned to be generous in my time. And I've learned that the only thing money can't buy is a room full of people. So that's my story.